<laughs> own <laughs> one. Um, yeah, but I'm a single man, so I've never seen a cushion. But, but yeah, it's not great because she's there saying, look, I didn't live at this home, and yet she's there saying things like, just got back. There are pictures of the cushions that her children look like they're living there. Neighbours said her children were living there. So, yes, it's not great. And the other home, the one that she said she didn't live at, she was known as the landlady, and neighbours said they didn't see her. So it's very, very tricky for, for Angela Rayner. And the problem is, of course, there's the deception element that seems to be there, allegedly, don't know what we're allowed to say. But then there's also the, the you know, there's the in initial thing that you, you cut corners, people cut corners, they try and make a little extra money, whatever. There's a capital gains tax issue, there's the electoral role issue. You've got your podcast. Yeah, but then also, there's now the deception issue, and then there's the hypocrisy issue because she was so tough on Rishi Sunak's wife about the non-dom status. She was tough on Nadim Zahawi about his tax status, mm. and th there was a party gate. So now it's a very, very difficult position. Now the problem for Starmer mm -hmm. is that he doesn't want to get rid of one of his key people. He's got his gang of four. He's, he's plotting his little sofa meetings where the world's essentially going to be run, not not just the country, the world by Starmer, Rayner, and a couple of others. So he doesn't want to get rid of her. Why? Because who's going to come in as deputy? Someone like Bergen, someone like Zara, no, Sultana, no, 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 no. radical lefty. No, no, no. So he wants to stick to so his I've own... I've got to disagree. I, I agree with a lot of your analysis, I think, comparing the billions of Sunak to what we're talking about here, which is one council flat, is slightly different. But in terms of who he brings in, he was forced to bring in Rayner because to appease the far-left vote. Now he has control of the Labour Party in the back, back office. He could bring in who he wants. He's not going to bring in any of those well, people. He doesn't want Rayner. He has to deal with her. Why, then, is he, has he been very weird on this issue and kind of ignored it well, and said she doesn't need to... Well, because she's a deputy, and it's going to make... At this point, of course, it's going to make Labour look bad. Yeah, right. But if you really want to get rid of it, there's so much more he could have done. He's been very coy no, about he's it. He's tried to keep her in the past, but the problem was he didn't control the party enough at the time to to be able to get rid of her. So when it did all kick off and he tried it, um, basically there was just too much of a stink and he actually had to give her a promotion. So what will he do now? Well, now I think, I think to be honest, it'll see how it goes. He'll see to what level this gets to. I don't think he wants to get rid of her this close to an election because I think she is... Uh, she, I don't know if you've read her story, but she has quite a remarkable background, regardless of this council flat or not. Um, and... I think he doesn't want to do anything that's going to jeopardise his lead. And I yeah. think that he's scared of, of doing anything because but, he's yeah. in the lead of them. Yeah, the question is, will he, will he lose people by not dealing with it? Because you, the Red Wall people may not be happy with this. You may be able to pass off the hypocrisy, but many won't be able no, to. No, I'm not passing off the hypocrisy, but what I'm saying is let's not compare the billions here with... I, I do uh, compare it, because I do compare it. And also, this is... Why is it not similar? No, no, it's about the deception late. It's about not owning up to it. It is... It, I, that, I, agree, that's I the... think lying is bad, and I think at some point you're going to get caught and she has been caught. And she probably has not paid taxes if he if she was the landlord. So that's theft from the government. It is a bad thing. The difference between the Tories and Labour is how much the Tories steal versus how much Labour steals, but it's still stealing. It sounds like this... But this is the thing that people don't understand about this country, which shocked me, is how everyone in this country is in on a scheme, is on a scam. They've got something in their mind, in their back pocket, that they're keeping secret. They're all... Cr yeah, because we're a much less wealthy country. We're an old, decaying country which, where we're poorer than the poorest state in America, Mississippi. So yeah. you have to understand, we're just grasping for anything we can. It's not like a vague, vaguely I, functioning country no, like yours. I think it has to do with the royal family and that people... <laughs> it has to do with the, no, I'm not even kidding. It's like okay. because, people, because people feel like they are, that they are uh, marginalised and that their, their wealth has been stolen by the rich people. It's, so yeah. someone like Angela Rayner says, I'm going to get a little bit back. Better, 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 better. And, and right. one more question. No. Who has... In. You, you talked a lot in the beginning. You should not be talking. You should let Nick and I have it out, and you should sit there. I should let Nick have it out. You should have it out, <laughs> and then say in the end, I think you're wrong. That's the way. You are... You is that break... the headliner's formula? Yes, that is... The that truth. you have to respect. OK, you're wrong. Next up is the Sunday <laughs> Telegraph, Nick. <laughs> well, you did say that he's wrong. So, the UK failing to prepare for war, say, ex-ministers. This comes from James Heapy. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. He's a former armed forces minister, and he's basically saying, we have no clue if it gets to war, we're basically dad's army. No disrespect to those fine gentlemen. But he's saying that war's a national endeavour and we're a long way behind. Uh, he's saying he's 43 and they haven't given serious thought to how we'll prepare for war since he was in primary school. 
And so, yes, not looking good. Not particularly shocking that our, our military is not ready for war, but it's just confirmation once again that we're totally not ready. Because because the because the Brit British people, God bless them, they're lovely people, but they're not ready for anything. They've lost they've lost their sense of you have lo a lot of you, not all of you. The people who watch this channel, I don't think have. They've lost the sense of nationhood, and nationhood needs to be. Res you need to fight for your nation, and on every metric. That's not the right word, but it sounded good. Is that British people don't recognize that their country is in danger? Well, I think that it's not just the British people. I feel like it's what the go article here is about how the government doesn't necessarily recognize it's not in danger. Oh, and you it, think that Labour's going to be better? No, but it has, there is no preparation. But the point is, we came on the back of the end of the Cold War. Yeah. People got lazy. We don't have any of these war plans. I do like it how it's always when a person quits. Like, oh, by the way, I'm quitting now, but just while I yeah. quit, here's what's wrong, which I didn't actually cover whilst I was employed. Yeah, and we're much better at sea, although we've lost that now completely. We can't stop a few dinghies, so... Yeah, yeah you're right, Lewis. It's about, it's about having the will. Part the will it. to live. Yeah, it's but the, will, the, will the will and the money and the soldiers yeah, but the will and the stuff. Yeah. You're actually threatened, as opposed to preparing in advance, which this country has been particularly bad at doing, as we've seen over the last... A case could so. be made for that. All right, let's move on. To, there's another story here. Children risk psychological harm if allowed to change gender, landmark trans review warns. Now, this is finally the publishing of the CAS report, Nick. Yes. Oh. I forgot we were getting on to this one, but uh, why don't you take it, Josh, since this is your expert topic? Well, it's just... We've been You're waiting You're breaking this. the format. Yeah, <laughs> <not> the <laughs> I'm breaking the format, because they say. gave me, like, four stories a minute before, and they said, you've got to know everything about all of them. Right. I knew all about Andreina's blooming cushions. Right, yeah, well, look. You should say... He should say it to me and make me look bad, and that's where the yeah. comedy that's, comes in. The program. All right, well, the, the gist of it is we've waited for this report now for the last year, finally being published, and the most damning thing they've said is that putting children and changing their names whilst in school it has a psychological repercussions and will actually can lock them in for life into medical um, transitioning. So this is pretty damning when we've also seen uh, different schools across the country, primary schools, giving false advice to parents yeah. and to themselves. This is not a good... Then, then again, good. then again, there's, this, this gets categorised, well, they would say this. They would say this, of course. If you're against it, of course you're going to say it. On the other hand, I've heard, I've heard tons and tons of people, including the, the woman that I spent a lot of time with. I spent her. She tells me the people are going to die if they're not trans. So, you, so there's both sides. Except of the there's story. no actual evidence for that, and now we have some evidence. Time for that. that they, they, think, they think right. there is. Finally, let's do the Observer, Lewis. Oh, well, this is good news. Good news here. I got my good news cup, which I'm not letting you Just go near because you're, because you're almost broke it. Good news available on my website, lewisschafer.co.uk. Anyway, Cameron warms of Gaza famine as Navy sent aid to, to the starving. Mm -hmm. uh, sends aid, Navy sent to aid the starving. And this is, uh, this is about World War III, because what it is is it's Britain is going to... And America is going to put a dock there and uh, in Israel's territory, and they're not. That's not Israel's territory, it's Gaza, and that's absolutely fine. Put a dock it, in there, yeah. get more food. And the point is, in this article, is it's the bring. Ask, ask him what no, to okay, do. Okay, but okay, then I will say this. <laughs> there's, a few <laughs> words, there's a few words here, if you've read this story a lot, yeah. that always, for me, when I read it, always stand out. Brink of famine, prospect of famine. It's never actually the famine. Yeah. It, they've been saying this for six months now. Yet no one has actually died of any famine and double the amount of food has no. actually been getting in. And you've seen footage of just people throwing away food. Are we play being played for fools, Nick? I don't know, because it, it, I'm more interested personally in the... Because I let you deal with like the, the uh, on-the-ground part. No, no, I'm more interested in the fact that Cameron... The, Rishi Sunak in the Sunday Express has now called for an end to the war in Gaza. And the, this is Cameron sort of talking... Basically, Cameron has... He's been more sort of slightly more sceptical about the Israel side than than others, that's, and now Sunak is finally yeah, and now Sunak's finally coming on board with that, and that's what I get from this is Cameron again warning he's worrying about the Palestinian people trapped, and it's interesting later on we're going to contrast that with Boris's approach. Yeah, but... everybody wants the end of the war. Israel wants the end of the war, but it can only come when the hostages are freed and the destruction of Hamas. Do you know what? The fact that you need to say that, nobody I ever... You, you shouldn't say it. This is a comedy well, program. Right. You don't have to... You right. do not you have to what, say then? it. Come up for the next section where there's going to be lots of laughs. Hey, Lewis, you ready to laugh? I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm trying to, to brighten this, this spirit up. OK, well, up. I'm going to agree with Boris Johnson. There's some mad mullers, and hate crime is Scotland's only crime. See you in two. 
Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday. When I was president of the Durham Union... Mm. Um, oh, yes, in, yes. ..in 2016-17... Um, I was hosting a debate, um, which was the question, this house sees China as a threat to the West. Now, it wasn't saying that that's what we believed. That was, the, that was a question. Up for debate. On, on, on one side, we had the former Foreign Secretary, Sir Malcolm Rifkind. Uh, on the other side, we invited uh, a woman by the name of Anastasia Lin. Now, she's someone who's been expelled from China for her human rights mm. activism. Um, she's a former Miss World contestant who's a, a great speaker. But we started getting loads of complaints uh, into, the, into my inbox from Chinese students at Durham University. And they started to say, uh, why are you hosting this debate? Why have you invited Anastasia Lin? She is banned from China. You can't host this woman. You can't host her. You can't have her well, they copy in your and paste debate. Jobs. Uh, they were all very, very similar. Mm. And we were sort of thinking, well, this is a union that is hundreds of years old, founded on the principles of free speech. We're not going to listen because some students are upset. And then it got to the point where I was pulled out of a tutorial that I was in, told to go to the union office and take a phone call from the Chinese embassy. And so I was taking a phone call here from diplomats in the Chinese embassy saying, you have to cancel this debate. You have to cancel this debate. It's crazy. At one point, they even threatened the UK's trade terms with China. I think they thought that I was perhaps a representative of the British state. I wasn't. I was a student. Um, but... I ignored them and I said, no, I we're, going to, we're going to host <laughs> this debate. We hosted the debate. It was a massive success. We heard strong arguments on either side. Uh, and, and frankly... Do you know what I... You know, it's a good thing that you were there to make sure that your university and its union upheld the values of Britain and our liberal mm. democracy. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels. We're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Well, Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Josh Howie with Sunday's Newspapers and two comics who can read, Lewis Schaefer and Nick Dixon. Lewis, let's start with the Sunday Times, where Labour <laughs> are losing me but winning Nick. Uh, because you are a... Uh, you're an inner-city Liberal and Nick is... Uh, a marginal Tory. A marginal Tory who's Tory. never voted Tory. Yeah, never voted. Funny. I don't, well, we're not going to... Well, you'll say who you voted for. I've never voted Tory either. I've never voted Labour. I can't vote in this country. They'll let anybody who comes to the country vote, but they won't let me because I'm an American. That's actually smart. I come from a place where people know how to vote anyway. So this is this is the report that they've done by YouGov poll. Seat by seat. And it basically says... It's a very interesting poll. It says... Uh, maybe I should read the headline. Labour is losing to urban Liberals but winning marginal Tories. It's saying, basically, that the Labour vote isn't that much of an improvement, mm. but... The Tories have decided not to vote, and the Labour are very scientific where, where they're getting their increasing increases are, and the Tories are not very scientific where they're losing Yeah, so, people. I mean, so, Nick, lo Labour are losing votes, but the mm -hmm. areas that they're losing the votes in don't matter because they already have a big enough lead, but the votes that they're gaining are in those kind of marginal, more marginal seats where... That's going to win, right? Is where you've laid out the whole piece there, Josh. Exactly. Corbyn, all he did was win big in areas where they're already Labour, because he was like, let's be even more Labour. Yeah. Whereas Starmer, very surgical, he's gone, let's let's get let's turn these Tories around. 
And the, and the Oz Tory is also being damaged by the impact of reform, although I learned today that reform still don't have candidates in about 200 seats, apparently. So the, 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 it depends which seats we're talking about. But, you know, it's once again, all Keir Starmer has to do, he has to just get rid of the nutters and not drop the Ming vase, and that's all he's doing. And he's also gaining, of course, in Scotland, because the SNP are absolutely mm. mental, as you may have noticed. So it's an easy win for Starmer. He just has to, as they say here, it's not really Labour winning, it's just the Tories losing. Starmer's just got to not look too mental. The SNP are having a complete meltdown down with their ridiculous hate crime law and their scandals and their terrible leader and their anti-white hatred. Then you've got, you know, you've got the Tories imploding, you've got reform. Starmer just has to be, be strategic, which is what he's doing. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see how the, the, the old attack that's been going on for the last year or two of saying, if you vote for Labour, you're actually voting for the SNP. That whole line of attack has obviously gone with the implosion of the SNP vote. Uh, we've also seen the Greens doing much better than they were, 7% as opposed to 2.7% in 2019. So that means that they've got a lot of um, anti-Semites voting Green now. And uh, but this is obviously good news for Summer, right, Lewis? Um, I don't, you know, it doesn't get any better. Well, it doesn't get any worse. The point is, the guy's going to win. This, the way this country has been running over the last many years, is Labour has a long period of time, and then the Tories have a long period of time, and then you get bored with them because the system is set up. It's an what do they call that when it's, it's a distraction? No, not a distraction. Unit it's, party. It's a uni, it's a, the unit party too, but it's it's the fact is is that there's no checks and balances going on. Winner take all. Winner wins all. It's not like in America where they kick the kick one party. Out, they kick a third of the party out. Every, yeah. every two the, the only years. thing is, it could get very strange if Labour wins such a crushing majority. Did you know? I might have said this before. Late, uh, Tony Blair and his book said that he was worried in 97 he was going to win by too much and, make, and the whole system was going to implode. Well, no, exactly. A healthy democracy needs... Uh, uh, or at least the illusion health, of, health, of democracy. Yeah, well, a healthy opposition. But there's uh, Andrew Doyle, you, I'm sure that, Lewis, you read his yeah. uh, interesting piece this week about proportional representation, right? I did read it. Yeah, right. On to the Observer now. And Nick, I've always been a big fan of Boris. Yeah, well, it's banning arms sales to Israel would be insane, says Boris Johnson. And... He's saying if the West continues to crumble, and especially if Britain and the US crumble, then the Israelis will be prevented from getting into Rafa. They'll be prevented from achieving their objective of finishing Hamas as a military force in Gaza. And the question is, do you really think that will happen? You see, much like with Ukraine, Boris is a sort of roaming jingoist, sort of ro roaming warmonger. He wants Trump to fund Ukraine, though, you know, Orban says Trump definitely won't. Mm. He wants... Israel to win against Hamas. The question is, do you think they, in both cases, that that can actually happen, or, or is it just perpetual war? It's particularly in Ukraine. The criticism is, can Ukraine actually win that war? And if they can't, then someone like Johnson is actually just leading, causing more death. That's the argument. Obviously, you're not going to agree on the Israel part, but that's one case against. And of course, he's vehemently disagreeing with Cameron, who I said earlier has taken a different tack, and he's saying, you know, he's he, following the, the deaths of the three British aid workers, which was a very tragic thing. Absolutely. And it only led to two sackings from the IDF, but still, after that, Cameron, I think, has taken a better tack, where he's saying, let's look at it and let's see what they do, whereas, whereas I, Johnson I, has been much more carry-on-the-war jingoistic. And I, I've got to be honest with you, I think... No, I mean, I'm not going to be honest with you, I'm just going to disagree with you. Uh, I think Cameron, for a while, since the very beginning, has been very, actually, anti-Israel. He's sort of hedging it up, saying what he needs to say, but I think it's quite obvious the position that he's been taking here. I think the only benefit of Brexit was that we'd never have to see Cameron again. Well, I, and now I agree he's somehow that. come back into the public life, mm -hmm. which I think is absolutely disgraceful and ridiculous. And the whole point of anybody calling for an arms embargo from the UK to Israel is so ridiculous when we're talking about 0.2% of Israel's weapons. We're also talking about a bunch of components in wider systems. Israel does not import any of the UK's weapons systems. And actually, the, the UK imports far more Israeli weaponry, including drones, which are basically how the next wars are going to be fought. So the idea of doing this arms embargo is only going to harm the UK, right, Lewis? Well, I don't think they're thinking about that. They're thinking about how, the, how it's working in the fields and in, in whatever, in the country. People are not happy with what Israel is doing. And unfortunately, the reason why they're not happy, because Israel's like dragged this thing on forever and ever. Yeah, they're fighting a months. war that has never been fought in, this, in an urban in this, environment right. that they've 
had nearly yeah. 20 years to prepare underground tunnels for. Right. What, sh what should the response be, though, when British people... Die? I know her mass also killed yeah. British people. When British people die, you know, Cameron's saying... And I hate Cameron every bit as much as you, but he's saying lessons must be learned from today's national Absolutely lessons findings and so on, whereas Boris is just carrying on the sort of war train. No, I think you could do both. You could still say that we still need to sell weapons to Israel, our ally, who are fighting Islamic is extremists who are basically gunning for the West next. And you can also say lessons do need to be learned, absolutely, and yeah. hopefully they will be. Well, there's a separate point about the civil service yeah, doing going rogue. They shouldn't go rogue and say what they said about the arms. I agree on that. Anyway, mail on Sunday next. Lewis, I know these mullahs are scary for you, but you realise that they're not writing about yoghurt, right? Yes. Uh, this is uh, stabbing kidnaps and terror campaigns. How Iran's mad mullahs are ordering gangland hits on the streets of Britain, and no one knows how to stop them. This is the Daily Mail. And it's a story about how they're stopping them. How uh, this guy was, <laughs> you know, so it's like it's the Daily Mail. It's like a huge look thing. Number one, it's like this is, this is a non-news story. Of course, Iran is putting its little fingers everywhere. Of course, they're trying to kill uh, people in this country who are Iranian citizens or not even Iranian citizens who are just, uh, you know, against Iran. That's the way war, war is. I don't like Iran, but this is a non-news story. Well, as they've been targeting a TV station, I just want to say I, I love Iran. Great people, <laughs> great history, very intelligent people with uh, many, many great qualities. Historical, historical yes. incredible. They've yeah. done a so lot I totally disagree with you, and if you need Lewis's address... <laughs> well, <laughs> I didn't say they're bad people. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting history of the, uh, the rise of the news station here that is basically watched massively now in Iran. It's got 30 million viewers. Yeah. And it's because... And when all the hijab stuff was going on, the, the hair covering and women being beaten up, yeah. that was, that's how they're getting a lot of their news source now. Yes. So Iran, or the, specifically the Islamic Revolutionary Guards, yeah. are really trying to shut the station down, and they just stabbed, or two strangers who've flown out the country immediately last week stabbed one of its presenters. Oh, yeah, terrific. Yeah, it's terrific. It's... But in terms of it, what it says, no one knows how to stop them. Well, here's an idea. Maybe prescribe the Islamic uh, Revolutionary Guards, just like the laws recommended, and then yeah. our government it's... sort of wimped out of. And on, on a lighter note, it's sad that there are one million viewers behind headliners. Fine. Is that true? <laughs> no, I just thought I was trying to add a lighter note. No, no, end. good. Fine, let's get to some light stuff. Nick, telegraph some good news to Scotland. Hate crime will decrease. Regular crime, on the other hand, is going to go through the roof. Yeah, Scotland, Scot Scotland. Scotland's hate crime law will force police to make cuts, warn senior officers, control room staff already on overtime as they struggle to handle volume of complaints under new legislation. Who could have predicted that this was a ridiculous, unworkable law? Well, everyone, because this is the point of a narco tyranny coined by Samuel Francis, 1992. It's where we have... You, let, you, you punish innocent citizens and you allow actual criminals to go free, and that's what we have now in Scotland. This is why... This is, this is all deliberate. It's team world, as you would say, Lewis. This is what they believe in. They, they believe in an anti-Western agenda. Obviously, Hamza Youssef does. And they believe in tyrannising What's ordinary anti people. What's anti-Western agenda? Well, the whole... Why would we have these elites who continue to tyrannise ordinary people with ridiculous laws like this, but they allow actual criminals to go free. What I mean is, behind that thinking somewhere is an ideology. It doesn't come out of nowhere. Everywhere is doing it. It's just taken to an absurd extent in Scotland. And the only hope in Scotland is it becomes so absurd that the whole thing could actually fall apart because it's absolutely unworkable. Well, it's very similar to what happened in uh, in America with Lenny, the Lenny Bruce trial, where where Lenny Bruce, the great American comedian, they they hounded him and they brought him to they you know they took him to trial for what he said and then they and then uh, and you know and then the people laughed at him and then anybody who was involved in that trial was ridiculed later. My own uncle. Yeah, but he was dead. He died a couple of years later, but my old uncle, who was a prosecutor in San Francisco, mm -hmm. he, um, he against, against Lenny Bruce, this is true, you can Google it, Arthur Schaefer, and he, uh, and he, he actually changed side and went on Lenny Bruce's side. Mm -hmm. You can Google it, it's an amazing story. Thank you, Lewis. The, the reason, by the way, it's a classic example of a Naga attorney is that they're saying, in taking care of this 6,000 complaints, they will lose resources and so something will not be solved. Another crime will not be solved. So it's specifically what we're seeing happen. They, they're taking time on ludicrous complaints, actual crimes will not be solved. But they know that's going to happen. Well, they, well they, you say that, but they, during the, when they were doing the legislation, 
this was raised. People said they would make sort of malicious complaints, and 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 all. That's what advisors said, and all of the government were like, all the SNP people were going, no, no, no one would ever do that. No one would ever. Yeah, but they're lying. The this is ideological. They're lying. They, they, they know what they're doing. So well, what is the police, Scottish Police Federation, saying that for? Are they trying to guilt the Scottish no, government? They're just saying they're going to have less resources now to do actual yeah, crime. Because the police are not behind it. They're just caught up in this, isn't they? Not the ones coming up with these it's ludicrous laws. I'd argue. Right. We're at the halfway point with some corkers coming up, including. The French army invading the UK, dumb phones, and the end of virtue signalling. See you there. Good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. Storm Kathleen continues to bring some very windy conditions across the UK through Saturday evening and into Sunday. Currently situated out towards the northwest of the UK, slowly pushing its way northwards through this evening and into the start of Sunday, but continuing to bring some very strong winds, particularly across western parts of the UK. Still seeing gusts up in the sort of 50s or 60s overnight, and particularly in northwest Scotland, and plenty of heavy showers too. This could lead to some localised flooding, particularly across southwestern parts of the UK. Turning a little drier and staying mild overnight temperatures around the high single figures perhaps even low double figures across the south but it will be briefly a drier start for many of us on sunday further showers though pushing their way north and eastwards as we go through sunday morning again these could be heavy in places perhaps some hail and thunder mixed in too and could cause some localized flooding across southwestern parts Southeast England definitely holding on to the best of the sunshine, but with a strong southwesterly breeze across the whole of the UK, it will take the edge of those temperatures, but despite being 16 or 17 degrees. Monday will start dry across Northern Ireland and much of Scotland, but it will turn increasingly cloudy as we head through the morning. Another area of low pressure moving in from the southwest, turning particularly heavy that rain across western parts of England and into Northern Ireland later. Further unsettled weather through the first part of next week, with temperatures generally a little bit above average, but there are some hints of something a little bit drier later in the week. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Glory DiPiero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. There's something else. Welcome to Headliners. <laughs> Nick, straight into the mail on Sunday, and why are we letting the French straight into our chateaus? That's a bit too much uh, man spreading <laughs> right now. Reveal your, um, put your groin it's, away, it's Lewis. It's too near. It's too. I can't work under these conditions. It, also, the heat that's He's shouting off about Israel while Don't, opening his legs. Sweating? No, it's my new jeans that I got, my new uh, tan. There's, they're boxer shorts. Don't Let's do. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we yeah, have this. see what I'm I have to deal with. Your name in now the he's way. touching me. He's got Lewis Schaefer Touch can in the way. Kill. We didn't see any groin. Yeah. OK, so I'll do the headline just for fun. So, Buckingham Palace will be guarded by French in, in <laughs> block capital what? soldiers for the first time in history, all to mark 120 years of friendly relations between Britain and the old enemy, which is also what I call Lewis. <laughs> um, so it goes back to 1904, as you'll know, the Entente Cordiale, of course, which was decided between the United Kingdom and the French Republic, saying, look, we're going to chill out now, guys, because we've had some bad times, but it's going to be good times ahead. 
So what we're doing is a sort of ceremonial thing. We've got 32 French soldiers, 40 guardsmen from the F Company, Scots Guards, and those two together comprise the entire French and UK military <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> so we just got to hope no one attacks on this day while these people are doing little dances and stuff. <laughs> Not dances, but, you know, little calisthenics, <laughs> whatever. They do. It's, no, it's nice, it's good. I respect the military, I'm just saying... I'm just trying to make light but this of it. But look, this story. is good news. They're our closest physical neighbour. Yeah. And we're getting together and hanging out and no, having it's a really, laugh. it's really bad news. It's okay. part of the whole team world business that uh, you were talking about. It's that you're, is that France and... We shouldn't be friends with Europeans. They're evil. They've, just, they've brought the world... <laughs> to, they've destroyed the world with their uh, galois and uh, jetans and cigarettes and whatever they whatever else they have. So it isn't that. It isn't that. You shouldn't let your enemy come into your country and they're, guard your place. That's the point, is they're not our enemy anymore. Do you know what? Since 1904. You know what? They'll never not be our enemy. God, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Lewis. That is great. That He's is winning himself it. back with the francophobia, winning back some GB viewers that I you lost with your royal family stands. <laughs> yeah. Hates absolutely. the royal family, but also hates France. And you know what? The royal, the royal family, is t they totally love the French. They like almost French. They, they love, love the French. French. Well, they do love the French. Uh, but this is the point that I thought was very interesting about this. Yeah. Is they're going to be guarding Buckingham Palace, but our soldiers will be Bucky, uh, Buckingham, <laughs> will be um, Bucking guarding the, the uh, presidential palace. Yeah. So I would say we've kind of got it better than them. Because, because just in case something happens... Some, the there's actually people there who can affect change. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was the point. I got right, it. Lewis, more mail, more reason to protect our blasphemy laws. Oh, God, I don't know. I hate these stories. I hate these stories. Well, Sorry unfortunately, it's that. a shame they keep on it's happening. 11, it's 11.30 at night. People don't want to hear this. Is uh, uh, No, they want to get angry. Religious... What does RE mean? Religious... Uh, education. Uh, education. I didn't know if it was like RE, like it was a memo. Ray, Ray. RE. RE. Re teacher the guy in hiding. hiding. Yeah, yeah. Like a, they shouldn't have... An email yeah. reply. Yeah. Uh, 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 RE religious teacher education. Yeah. forced into hiding after showing pupils a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. Fears he'll be looking over his shoulder for the rest of his life. And he probably will be, because because this is the enemy that we're facing. We're facing people who will kill. Me. And you look at you look at Salman Rushdie, and and, yeah, and we he, thought that was over. We thought it was over. Thirty years later, or twenty, I don't know how many years later it was, and he's suddenly he's walking he's into door frames. Exactly, he's in bad shape. And the the his his own teachers' union didn't stand up for him, but they're worried about somebody, other people. And uh, and I think it's very. Uh, it's very sad. It's sad. That's why mm. you don't want to hear this, because we're so impotent. And this Rishi Sunak guy, mm. he should basically declare war on anybody who says anything against this guy. Well, they should. I mean, th so this story, Nick, is a, is a friend of his or associate of his. Mm. He's been raising money for him and has sort of not been in direct contact, but has kind of got information about yeah. his state of mind. No, it's tragic. I mean, as it says here, the school had massive police union, the MPs in his mm. constituency didn't stand up to him. It's absolutely shocking. Yeah, for him. F for him, and the Khan review has revealed this. Yeah, and that is actually shocking. And what's even more shocking is when we acknowledge that liberal democracy allows a certain number of people to be sacrificed, we just have to look at the many attacks we've seen. That's built into the system. Yeah. If I was going to be very dispassionate and objective, I'd say, look, I respect Islam, they believe in God, they respect Jesus more than most secular people. They've got some critiques of liberal democracy that are quite valid. But the, the reality is liberal democracy and Islam are on a collision course, and, some, and these things are going to keep happening and, until... Well, I don't know, until one of them wins, I suppose. Well, we're talking, well, war, we're, we're talking about Islamists. We have to yeah. differentiate between the two. But I do want to also say that it's interesting that the school uh, is saying how, oh, we're going to make sure... We ensure that mistakes like this will never happen again, which basically means they're just going to cancel that lesson. If they really want to make sure mistakes like this never happen again, redo the lesson that they did, and if it kicks off, arrest people. That's how they should do make sure the mistakes don't happen again. Right, Lewis, more mail, more reason. Oh, no, that's, we've done that one. We've got some more blasphemy laws. No, Sunday Times now. Nick, I think I might need to rethink my parenting tactics. Who knew that letting drug addicts do whatever they want might backfire? Well, we should know that by now. Yeah, Oregon's drug decriminalisation went horribly wrong. What now? And it's a basically a bleak... If you've seen The Wire and you remember the Hamsterdam episode, oh, yeah, yeah. this won't surprise you, because they've essentially... They legalised drugs and horror ensued, as it always will. 1,683 people died in the 12 months uh, following... 20, this, was, this was, I think, 2020. It was a five-fold increase mm. on 2019. And they're just saying it's just hellish scenes of just people in horrific states from these extreme drugs. It all actually kicked off after the alleged killing of George Floyd, who himself, I believe, died of a drug overdose. Anyway... It, as I've said before, you can't. Reality is right wing. You can't. You can't do this. You can have 
a sort of de facto look the other way approach to drugs which we've had and that's the kind of king log approach in Aesop's fable a kind of incompetent government that doesn't cause that much trouble you can have a more tough drug stance which I would welcome but what you can't have in my opinion is pro a state being pro drugs and it'll end just like made in Canada where they're killing people in massive numbers anything like euthanasia drugs should not be enforced by or allowed they're by not, the state they're not it's not that it's not that Oregon was pro drugs it's just they let they let people take drugs. I I totally support that. These people who have taken drugs, who are causing the chaos, have broken other laws. They've been loitering. They've been pooing on the sidewalk. They've been littering. Mm. These things should be enforced. I guarantee you, if they enforced all the laws around, people could take drugs. Yes, they, but they decriminalized the possession. They were stripped of the ability to arrest yeah. addicts. Yes. They couldn't stop them to taking it in front of a shop or playground. So effectively, it was legalized. Uh, mm. Yes, and it should be legalized. It should but, be. But if, you, if, you're no, it shouldn't. if you're stopping, if you're stopping there and you're doing, maybe, maybe injecting drugs on the sidewalk in front of a school should be illegal. But the fact is, is they don't inf they don't enforce any of this stuff. This is what every one of these stories is. People don't have the backbone. If they said drugs are legal, you can take all the drugs you want at home and die if you want to die, but do not litter while you're taking the drugs. Because if you litter, we're going to put well, you in jail. Oh, for I see, years. but it's both. It's both. Okay, I think you've been watching a lot of New Jack City. Is that really? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not cool. Oh, that's a great film. Telegraph next, Lewis, and time to invest in Nokia shares. Uh, yeah, Nokia. Uh, parents urged to buy dumb phones to protect children from social media. And this is, uh, this is the National Education uh, Union, and they have their annual meeting, and the parents are complaining about it. There's all these groups out there. And I've even heard people complain. I don't have any kids, but I've heard people complain about this, about, about having... Don't, you've got two phone. kids. Uh, oh, yeah, don't I? I forgot about them. <laughs> They don't seem like kids. They just seem like bad adults now. They've reached that stage. They're not bad adults. They're lovely, lovely children. Uh, one's 23. If, you, if any girls out there, women out there, looking for a 23-year-old is a bit of a... Or a 65-year-old. <laughs> who's, who's got Lewis's genes. <laughs> or me too. Ladies, any takers. I'm up to offers. But it's basically saying that smartphones are bad and they should make phones that don't have all the social... Well, actually, what it's saying, it's a bit more nuanced than that, isn't it, Nick? Because it's saying that it's not that smartphones are bad, it's the social media apps on them, but the, the smartphone element of having maps, having banking apps, mm -hmm. these things are actually yeah. very useful. My kids, they do a huge amount of their homework on their phones. Yeah, it's kind of semi-smartphones, although we didn't need any of that. We just lived and ran free in the fields. But, yes, it's dangerous. The prefrontal cortex doesn't develop till 25, and in women, sometimes never does. So... <laughs> You know, of course, I'm, I think it's a good idea. Wow, you know when you make a joke and Lewis... When Lewis does it and takes his breath, I it's, you know... We've got to try and do jokes on the show. Joke. Yeah, I mean, really. I saw a graph on Twitter. I don't know if it was real. I saw a graph, OK? Is it because okay. you feel like he's stepping onto your shtick, Lewis? Um, but you know what? No. And doing it better than you. Yes, I do. He just said he's available when he's in a relationship. I mean, he, he said worse things than me no, in that whole I'm segment. No, I am. A, I'm not available... But if somebody has something better than the one that I'm with, of course I'm going to have to, you know, I don't think my girlfriend would have any hard feelings. Getting slightly back just quickly to the story. We need the to do the next the, one. The, yeah. the, the, the point here is, is it up to big tech or is it yeah. big government or is it parents? Or big, parents. big parents. <laughs> you think you that's know, they want to blame big tech. But I guarantee you that there, there are companies out there that if there's a big enough demand, they will make something like this. It shouldn't be a federal law saying, you know, Facebook, can't go on this. I mean, I wonder in 20, 30 years' time if people are going to be looking back and be like, I cannot believe you let kids on social media. Probably. Ones. If we're still like. Yeah. Right, back to the Sunday Times. Nick, a tough week for Humza Yusuf. Is this the cherry on top? Yeah, so it's voters sick of Humza Yusuf's virtue signaling, says Joanna Cherry. And she's the SNP MP. And she said that voters were expressing a real anger about his virtue signaling rather than tackling other issues. And if they spent half as much time advancing independence as they had on identity politics, Scotland might already be an independent country. Mm. Now, there's two little quibbles I have with that. One, even though I basically agree, one is that it's not virtue signaling, it's much worse. It's anti white racism and it's the active destruction of the country. Number two, uh, they don't want independence, of course, because that would destroy their whole raison d'etre, yeah. and then they could be blamed for getting things wrong rather than just blaming England all the time. So that's yeah. my only quibbles there. Though, basically, raised, she's right. Do they have raisin d'etres in Scotland? Isn't the that a French thing? Is that a French... A French okay. Well, we've, we've got the entente cordiale we, with France. We'll break in a second, yeah. but, Lewis, 
Do you think that this might signal the end of virtue signaling at large? If voters do reject him and that is part of the reason why they're rejecting him, do you think that now companies or yeah. other politicians might look at this and go, you know what, maybe I should just do good policies that are going to help the most people? I don't think it's the... Yeah, first of all, there's, there'll always be virtue signaling. I'm wearing a tie that's virtue signaling. You know, there's always going to be... What's the virtue that you're signaling? That, that I look like that somebody has a himself. job or something. <laughs> that I own a tie. Then I want to tie but, a tie. You're right, though. It could... You need the tacit consent of the people, and it could... Even the Soviet Union collapsed under the weight of its own absurdity in and the end. And she's a member of his own party. OK, Is great. she not? Great insight, Lewis. Just the final session to go now, and it's pretty mental. Smoking bones, the death of sumo and robot holidays. See you in two. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Is the brand of toothpaste super important here, or is it more about the toothbrush? Because I was told a long time ago by my dentist, electric toothbrush, Pip, that is the way to go. You're exactly right. I mean, the action of mechanically removing plaque, so using a brush, is much more effective than the brand of toothpaste itself. But in terms of the ingredient in toothpaste that we're looking for, it's something called fluoride. And fluoride is essential to help remineralize and strengthen our teeth. It's really important to use a toothpaste with fluoride. And in terms of brushing, Using an electric toothbrush is just much easier. You know, you're brushing your teeth first thing in the morning, last thing at night. You're going to be a bit tired in those times. So using an electric toothbrush, you just hold it against your tooth and gum and it does all the work for you. So it's just much easier, in my opinion. But you have to use your electric toothbrush properly. You're exactly right, yeah. There is a technique of actually brushing your teeth, although it sounds really simple. With an electric toothbrush, you have to hold it against the tooth and the gum. Ideally, you want a pressure sensor in that toothbrush so you know exactly when you're pressing too hard. But if you're using a manual toothbrush, you need to move it around and small circular motions. But actually, what I see is people who use manual toothbrushes, they tend to over-scrub and over-brush, which can actually lead to gum recession and your enamel thinning long-term. Sometimes I will get up in the morning and I will have breakfast and then I'll brush my teeth. Is that wrong? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's wrong. So the best time to brush your teeth is first thing in the morning as soon as you wake up. If you're brushing after you eat and after breakfast, you're brushing your teeth in that weakened, acidic state. So your teeth are actually under attack and they're much more vulnerable. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Patrick Christie's. Every weeknight from nine, I bring you two hours of unmissable, explosive debate and headline-grabbing interviews. What impact has that had? We got death threats and the bomb threat and so on. Our job is to do what's in the best interest of our country. You made my argument for me. My guests and I tackle the issues that really matter with a sharp take on every story. I'm hearing it up and down the country. That was a beginning, not an end. Patrick Christie's tonight from 9 p.m. only on GB News, Britain's news channel. Stolen. I do like you, Lewis. Welcome back to Headline. <laughs> <laughs> Kick off with a star. And will Labour legalise this, Lewis? Yes, uh, this, is, uh, this is graves dug up to make deadly drugs from human bones as national emergency. Which you think should be legalised straight away, of course. Well, I do think, yeah, but that's, here's, there's a couple of interesting factors here. This is, has to do with Sierra Leone, where they have a drug mixing cannabis, fentanyl and tramadol. Yummy. But, but they actually think that ground-up human bones are the thing that make the difference. That it has some kind of thing. It's when the truth is, ground, if, if it was ground it's up. It's like KFC, it's like the extra little herbs. The extra thing, which is the human bows of Sierra Leone. And then your question is will labor le legalize this? And the answer is yes, they will. And because what they're advocating now, and it's not just labor, it's the Tories too, they're advocating digging up the dead in this country to use the spaces again. They have no respect for the dead, and they're 
digging up graves that were buried forever to put new dead in those graves. To so the make drugs out of them? I didn't know that. That's not disturbing. To, it is totally it's disturbing. This is your campaign. You can Google it. This, this was, is your campaign that's been going on for decades. At, at the Camberwell Old Cemetery and across hundreds of other cemeteries, they've supposedly run out of space. They say, what we're going to do is we're going to reuse the graves, wow. which means digging you up should, the dead. You should wow. run for office on that single issue. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's absolutely. It is awful, yeah. It's absolutely awful. And you're right, they will legalize it because this is the path we're going down in the West with liberalizing everything. Rousseau was a fool because if you leave humans to do what they want, this is what they do. They dig up bones and get high on a bizarre Think concoction of cannabis, up. fentanyl, and tramadol yes. and human bones. What's it called? Kush. <laughs> Kush. Right, Nick, Sunday Times next, and a new catchphrase for Lewis. <laughs> death of sumo. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. It's the yeah. death of it's the death of death sumo, of sumo. OK? <laughs> Look, it's the death of sumo. It's Japan's traditional sport is in peril. And it's really sad because, of course, it comes from the Shinto religion, which Japan is actually still majority Shinto. Mm. But, but some aspects of it are falling a, a, apart, like the sumo tradition goes back 1,500 years. And uh, it, it, it's all about Shinto notions of purity. That's why they salt the thing. They, there's a ban on women who are regarded as impure. Yeah. Not my words, the words of Lewis Schaefer yeah. and the sumo community. But... Uh, but the, there's a few problems going on. One, the people are getting fatter. They, they don't need to actually be that fat. That's kind of a myth. They're getting too fat. It's too demanding for the sort of young kids. And the other thing is they're just bullying in the so-called stables. One guy was punching and whipping junior members of the stable, glued their fingers together and made a makeshift flamethrower made out of an aerosol. It's like Lewis backstage. Back yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's frowned upon in the sumo community. So it's, they're struggling. Yeah. I mean, it is sad because I, I am an incredibly conservative Was your uncle also a sumo? Do you know what? I tell you something. He played. He played in the Negro Leagues, and uh, <laughs> I think for awkward right. reasons, I should say you can't say that. I can't say that. But that's what they were called. <laughs> okay, fine. They were called that in America. Reasons. Anyway, anyway the, tr the truth is, he's, it's sad because it's it is very Japanese. But when they when they let. Well, they, they let big, fat Americans in. Remember those in the early days? Now they let Mongolians in, and, they ca and they're having trouble saying only... I just... They have a temporary win with Takaru Fuji. Sorry about the pronunciation. He's doing yeah. really well, and he's, he's a temporary boost, but in, in, in general, it's declining. It's, it's massively declining, but they're also saying because other sports have become popular as well, and I think that they're missing out. I think uh, we've seen that one of the big solutions for it is to, to have a women's division. It's been such a big... You know, hit yeah. football. I think women's <laughs> sumo. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll watch that. Or you could say, or you could say, they should yeah. bring it to to uh, to America or Britain because the people here are just so fat and bloated. <laughs> There's so <laughs> much. Yeah, you think that this would be the. And they all wear the nappies. Reason. All you got to do is be fat and fall on someone, it, it, and then you're suddenly a sports person. Yeah. I mean, this genius. Mel on Sunday now. Is this what Jesus would want, Lewis? Even shop robots should have a day off. That's what the uh, German court rules. And this is this is a totally German story, because what's what's ha it's a mixture of robots. And, and being told they can't work on a Sunday. You will not work. And uh, what happened? <laughs> I can't believe I did that. I'm not I think you're allowed to. Yeah, yeah. After I'm everything allowed. you've been through. What it is is, is, is they got the... They, like, we have those automated, uh, like, uh, the Amazon shops, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and they don't like to... They don't want people to work on Sundays because, because of the union of shop workers who own their own shops, they feel they're going to be put out of business. Yeah. Because they don't want to work every single day of the week. Why should they have to come in on Sunday? They need a day off. And so th these people are... So it seems like a joke. They're saying, well, why can't... The sh shop has no employees. But there are people who are working, looking at the... Uh, watch Very before. quickly, uh, more mail. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with this race theory. I'm glad you gave me this one right at the end. It's meet Goldilocks, the breedless dog of the future. All breeds would merge into one within just five years without humans, expert claims. So it's basically saying that it'd be this perfect dog, they'll all be doing what they want. It's kind of globalist propaganda. I do understand this point. If inbreeding goes There's too the far, none of them can function. That's a good-looking dog. But, yeah, his, his argument kind of that breeding is really eugenics and that we should just let them run free and... I don't know if that's... Because it's interesting that we basically bred all of these different varieties into dogs as yeah. humans. and be, That's what I find interesting about it. And then when humans are gone, they're just all going to have lots of sex and they're just all going to become, like, one big dog again. Well, in a way, you said it. Did you say it was racist or something? It's basically yeah. saying against... 
I mean, look look what's happening to the world. Everybody's, okay. everybody's turning. They're starting to look okay, more and more like me. Papers, right. No, yeah, then that's what we don't want. Yeah. The show is nearly over. Let's take another quick look at Sunday's front pages. The Mail on Sunday. In her own tweets, the proof Rayner has been lying. Sunday Telegraph, UK failing to prepare for war, says ex-ministers. Sunday Times, Britain's support for Israel is not unconditional, warns Cameron. The Observer, Cameron warns of Gaza famine as Navy sent to aid the starving. Sunday Mirror, Corrie cast of living crisis. Daily Star Sunday, Psycho Seagulls copying humans. <gasps> that is it for tonight's show. Thank you to Lewis and Nick. Headlines back tomorrow at 11 p.m. And if you're watching at 5 a.m., then stay tuned for breakfast. Have a great weekend. Bye. That warm feeling inside from Boxed Boilers. Sponsors of weather on GB News. Good evening. Welcome to your latest GB News weather from the Met Office. Storm Kathleen continues to bring some very windy conditions.